Hey everyone, this is chapter 6.4 and I'm going to be talking about Hyperledger. As a brief introduction, my name is Siddharth Ramesh and I'm the assistant director of Ben and I'm a software engineering at IBM Blockchain. You can find me on Slack as at Sid Ramesh. In this module, you're going to learn about what the Hyperledger project is, why it was started, what are the different services on Hyperledger, an overview of the Hyperledger fabric, a marbles demo from the IBM blockchain, and finally, ways in which you can get involved with the Hyperledger. So if you look at the existing blockchains today, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, each one of them was designed with a certain application in mind. Bitcoin is specifically designed as a digital currency. Ethereum was essentially created to build a decentralized application platform that runs smart contracts. And Ripple was built to be thought of like a trust protocol that can bypass banks. But none of these were really designed for the needs of enterprises and regulated financial institutions in mind. A lot of the design implementations that went into the Bitcoin were well thought out for how Bitcoin should work, but wasn't really generalized across many applications. As a result, there is limited throughput in Bitcoin, about three to seven transactions per second. And if you've been active in the Bitcoin community, you would have noticed that the Bitcoin block size debate is still ongoing. So slow transaction confirmations, 10 minute blocks, and typically you need to wait about 60 minutes for making sure that your transaction went through. Lack of privacy is an issue. It is mostly completely open, pseudonymous, and you don't know who's storing your data. So you have anonymous processors and miners, and you don't know what location they're in. And this, for example, leads as a concentration of miners in China. So this kind of it makes it hard for businesses to trust these networks. And finally, you have poor governance. Generally, these communities are kind of discord disorganized. And one of the examples to note can be seen from the recent DAO attack and the hard work that resulted from it. So hence, the Hyperledger project was created around the time of December. 2015 under the Linux Foundation. Essentially, Hyperledger is a collaborative project that hopes to create a cross-industry open standard for blockchain technology and thereby leveraging distributed ledgers for transforming the way business transactions are conducted globally. A strong governance model is vital to the development of a Hyperledger project and so that's why the Hyperledger project was initiated under the Linux Foundation. The Hyperledger project is growing so rapidly on a global scale and currently comprises of 95 members. So why are so many different companies joining Hyperledger? Well, it's clear. There's a high demand for permission blockchains. So let's look at over some of the feature requirements that make Hyperledger stand out. With regards to private transactions and confidential contracts, Hyperledger should eventually support a wide variety of cryptographic tools and approaches to ensure the desired choices of conf confidentiality and privacy are available. The goal is to get various tools for selectively revealing information about identities, properties of a transaction, smart contract state, and so on. In addition to private transactions and confidential transactions, the concepts of identity and auditability based on a mature public key infrastructure is important. In addition, in addition to the identity, it is also important to note that Hyperledger will offer users the ability to mask their identity in certain situations and to only prove it when necessary. This, of course, goes well beyond the notion of traditional identity. Next, we look at performance and scalability. There are several factors that affect the performance of any chain network. Some of the prominent ones are the proximity of the validating nodes, number of validators, encryption methods, transaction message size, the consensus algorithms deployed, and so on. The current performance goal for the Hyperledger Fabric project is to achieve about 100,000 transactions per second in a standard production environment of about 15 validating nodes running in close proximity. As we have more blockchain networks working independently, there would be a need for interoperability. And the hopes are that there would be functionality for interoperability between two or more blockchain networks. Finally, we look at portability. 
The Hyperledger project achieves portability by abstracting the value-added systems from the interfaces of its core components. For example, smart contracts could be moved from one deployment to another without having to make any changes. So, when we think about the architecture for the Hyperledger, there are five components to it. To begin with, identity services manage the identities of entities, participants, and ledger objects such as assets and smart contracts. And then you have policy services that manages the access control, privacy, and the consensus rules. The blockchain services manages the distributed as ledger aspect of things through a peer-to-peer -peer communication protocol. Different consensus algorithms guaranteeing strong consistency may be plugged in and configured by deployment. And the final layer that is the smart contract services is basically a secured and lightweight way to sandbox the entire smart contract execution process. This can be thought of like a secured container that is locked down. So the Hyperledger project uh, actually has multiple projects under it and one of them is the Hyperledger fabric and it is still under incubation. The project was initially contributed by IBM and is still under development. So what exactly is the fabric? The fabric is a modular structure that allows pluggable implementations of various functions. It features powerful container technology to host any kind of mainstream language for smart contract development. And in the Hyperledger fabric, transactions are secure, private, and confidential. And like you saw in the previous slide with the Hyperledger architecture, the fabric too is aligned into three different categories such as membership, blockchain, and chain code services. And chain code here is basically the smart contract. On the fabric, you have four developer guides. You have a chain code, developer guide, application developer guide, fabric, and operations developer guide. Basically, you can use any one of these developer guides for your intended use. Moving on, this is, this is the image of a fabric network. So you have multiple peers who act as validators, and then you have a client who is with an end user, and then you have the membership services, you have auditors who have access to the ledgers, and the consensus networks have, the consensus protocol actually goes goes on right over here. To go a little bit more into detail about chain codes, chain code is the smart contracts for the hyperledger fabric. It's the imp interpretation of the smart contract method that the fabric uses. It's basically a programmatic code that's deployed on the network where it's executed and validate, validated by these chain validators during the consensus process. Developers can use chain codes to build business contracts, assets, and collectively manage their decentralized applications. Currently, chain code uh, languages are supported by Golang and Java. Now I'm gonna show you a marbles demo that was developed by IBM Blockchain. It's a simple, uh, simple asset transfer application and you have two, two, two people involved in the network where they're trading marbles uh, Bob and Leroy so I'm gonna go create a marble of color red size large and then I'm gonna give it to Bob I'm gonna create the marble and now you're gonna see the marble up here on Bob's side so now I'm gonna trade this marble over to Leroy. And then you're gonna see what happens in the transaction block is that every time I switch a marble from one place to another, a block gets added. So this kind of shows that every time an asset being transferred, this gets recorded onto the blockchain. Now I can go ahead and delete a marble if I wanted to, and that too gets recorded on the network. So if you notice, number 13 is the block and it has the property delete. So how can you get involved with Hyperledger? Well, the best thing to do is joining the discussion on Hyperledger's Slack channel. You could also participate in working group meetings where basically there are different groups 
uh, discussing issues and use cases regarding blockchain. You can also join the Hyperledger's mailing list. And the best option is to contribute code to the ongoing Hyperledger projects that is the Fabric and Sawtooth Core. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Slack. My Slack username is at Sidramish. Here are my credits and references. Thank you.